My name is Charlene Brown and I have lived in Butte Falls since 1945 when my family and I first moved here. Uh, we moved from Silverton, Oregon, uh, a big two-story house with four bedrooms, beautiful lawns on an acre and a half of ground. We moved out to a place called Little Tokyo and it was a, a row of cabins that were uh, owned by Medco, the, the uh, corporation that ran the logging up here, and they had um, provided these as housing for their employees. It was called Little Tokyo, and I was going to mention that, it, because it was right at the end of the war, and the housing was so poor, it was, uh, uh, units were three, three rooms, uh, no electricity, no, we did have running water, but we didn't have indoor plumbing. The bathroom was out in the back, and we shared that with the cabin next door. And so it probably reminded the people in town of, you know, the living conditions in Tokyo, or in Japan, or in, in other countries that were crowded and small and so they called it little, they nicknamed it Little Tokyo. My father was a, a logger uh, most of his life. Uh, he worked for Weyerhaeuser in the northern part of the state as a timber faller. And my mother's health wasn't good. Uh, she had asthma and it was difficult for her in the wetter climate up there. So they moved to Butte Falls where it was drier. He got a job with Medford Corporation and worked there till he retired and uh, uh, as a timber faller. And that's why he was, we were allowed to live in this cabin and, at first. And uh, uh, we moved into town in 1949 when my parents purchased the Butte Falls Cafe and they ran that for several years and we bought a house in town. They bought a house in town actually. <laughs> and uh, um, I spent my first year uh, of 1949 washing dishes in the cafe. That was my first job. Uh, very little pay but I got my room and board <laughs> and so forth. So um, then uh, we went to school. I went to school in the old two-story building. And it was uh, back in the days when the train logging was still going. And when the train would, the train had to bring the logs out of the woods. And then there was a steep trestle down at the fish hatchery that the train couldn't, it could pull a lot of cars out of the woods uh, coming down the hill, but then it couldn't pull all these up at the same time, so they would back it off into a, a side uh, uh, line and drop off half of the, tra uh, the train cars and pull the other half up the steep hill. And, and so when we were in school, the, the train ran right by the grade school. And so at about two o'clock in the afternoon, we would hear the train coming and it would get so loud that the windows would rattle and the teacher couldn't talk because we all, all had to do study hall at that time because you couldn't hear anything uh, but the train. And of course, the train, it crossed the Butte Falls Highway right by the school and it had to whistle because of the car. So it would whistle coming and going and then it would have to go back down the hill and get the other half. So for probably the last hour of our school day we listened to nothing but the train uh, <laughs> coming up the hill <laughs> headed down the road. Um, That's a great story. Another, another thing about that train was the older boys and Darwin, you'll probably hear from Darwin, and this story uh, was one of those older boys that they 
would go down and grease the tracks on the hill so that the drivers of the train would slip when they hit that grease. <laughs> and we would sit there in our classroom and we could hear this train coming up the hill, chug, 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 and it would hit that grease and go chug, 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 chug. And I, <laughs> we would all sort of look at each other and snicker and laugh because we knew what had happened. The funny part of that was the fact that uh, Darwin's dad was the fireman on the train or was part of the train crew so um, and that was that was always a special memory for me. Yes. Do you have anything you you want to add? Tell tell about the time that they burned the the uh, we used to build the the um, bonfire. Warren Brown. I moved here in 1948, and uh, the story she was talking, telling about was we built a big bonfire and we'd burn it at the end of the year. The sports and, team at the, at the school. Yeah. And Prospect decided they'd come over the day or two before and they'd burn it up. So we had to go out and, well, Medco actually did it for us. They, they took their dump trucks out and hauled in a bunch of railroad tires and uh, <laughs> built a big pile. Of, so we had it. We got to burn it anyway. So. Every year we we do this at, at the, for the sports teams in the middle of the ball field, and it would take us a week probably yeah, yeah. sometimes to. Uh, some kid would get their dad's pickup, and we'd go out and scrounge around old logs and chunks and old ties and tires. You could burn tires in those days. Those and were pretty smelly. Yes, <laughs> and we'd pile this up, and it would be as tall as sometimes as almost as tall as a, a single-story house. Yeah. <laughs> and like he said, we we'd work all week to get this built, and then uh, prospect sneaked over. We always had a. Uh, deal with prospect. I mean, we were always very com competitive. They were your rivals. Yes, and so they sneaked over that night and <laughs> burned it down. And so we had that fire, and of course the kids were all just crushed. And so the, the dads and Medco allowed them to do this. They went out and uh, got all rebuilt it and so we got to have our bonfire after all anyway. But <laughs> that was that was one of the school stories that we never will forget. <laughs>